Hey you guys, it's Guru Joe with the Warriors and we're bringing you another Kali video today. But before I talk about progressions and everything that I wanna to get to today, please take a minute and like and subscribe the channel. It really helps us out and as we get closer to a thousand subscribers, there's a lot of other benefits that we can use to serve you guys a lot better that are out there. I really appreciate the buzz and the feedback right now that we've been getting from the recent videos that we've posted. And the questions are great too. And so right now I want us to start by issuing a little bit of a challenge for us, which I think will be really entertaining for everybody out there as well. So you probably notice when you look around YouTube or social media that most channels that are doing instructionals like we are doing, they only offer one topic. Oh, we're gonna do Kali and knife handling, knife specific. Oh, we're gonna do C-Lot. Oh, we're gonna do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, we're gonna do Gracie Jiu Jitsu, not sports Jiu Jitsu. Oh, we're gonna do MMA. And so things are very restricted to one category. And please let us know if, if you'd rather have us focus our channel, we can do that. It's just gonna require us to make like five different channels instead of one all encompassing vehicle here. We are planning on uploading curriculum and those will be segregated. But uh, that's the thing that's unique about the Warriors and I don't wanna throw it away because we have trained myself and my partners like Eric Shiley with some of the top experts in the world for decades. And we had the ability to teach Gracie Jiu Jitsu under Pedro Sauer, Muay Thai kickboxing, MMA, Ji Kune Do were directly certified by Guru Dan and Asano and another mentor of mine, Chris Clark. And I think that gives us a really big advantage. So my challenge to you guys is please give us some questions, some more feedback. And if there's any technique that you want to see, I don't care if it's made up or if you saw it on a movie or in the latest competition, some fight, or maybe you're fighting yourself, please throw a question our way uh, that's relating to any technique or any martial arts aspect. And just let's see if we can answer it and see if the answer is satisfactory. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So I look forward to your questions on that stuff. So today, what are we talking about? We're talking about progressions in martial arts. So a progression, let's define that, is simply something that builds on the foundation that came before. And this is relevant to what I was just saying about YouTube channels. So a lot of times you see techniques that are almost like a, they're almost like a gimmick, you know, like, hey, watch this knife defense and it's the only thing you're ever gonna need to know to get out of a situation and if you don't do it, you're dead. Something like that, you know, it's always kind of extremist, you know, the top five self-defense moves for fighting or, or whatever it is. But the problem with that is all you really have are gimmicks. And unfortunately, this is a trend that I see in a lot of martial arts schools. It was something I was exposed to over 30 years of doing martial arts. Um, but if you look at like something like the Pedro Sauer curriculum, Master Sauer has really broken it down to these are the fundamentals. You need to learn these first and then move ahead. And what that does is gives you a big picture. You understand how things are connected. And it's not that there's so much a shortcut, but you just are able to get ahead a little bit faster because you're not reinventing the wheel. You're not figuring out where the pieces to the puzzle fit in. If you're left with like a lot of holes, it's kind of like Swiss cheese as far as your game is. You have some things connected, but there's gaps in your game and you're always gonna suffer. And so you want everything to fit together. It's kind of like if you go to move and you're clearing everything out of your house, you get to the new place and you have everything in boxes, but you didn't label anything. So you've got boxes everywhere, but you don't know if they go to the kitchen, the garage, the basement, your bedroom, whatever. So it's gonna take you 10 times longer to unpack rather than if they were organized in the first place. Techniques are kind of like that. If they're in separate boxes here and here, man, how does my footwork go together with my striking? How do my combinations go together with my basic striking? So this is exactly what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna try my best to quit talking. But uh, last week I gave you the basic 12 angles of attack. I gave you the footwork that we cover in a variety of shadow boxing, some of the basics, not all of them. And then um, today, we're gonna do a lot of heavy combinations on how to really get the Kali stick moving. And you can apply all these to any kind of weapon. It could be a dinner fork, your pocket tool, pocket knife, tactical pen, flashlight, whatever you have. And I'll be happy to do some videos on that as well. So with that said, I really appreciate you guys again. Thanks for liking and subscribing to the channel. As always, if you have any feedback or questions, we're always thrilled to hear it. And with that said, I will just leave you with the technique and I'll timestamp this video, so in case you don't want to listen to me chat for five minutes in the mirror, uh, you can skip ahead right to the movement. All right, with that said, 
The progression we have here is to combine the numbering system with the single sink warm-ups I did the other day. So if you don't have that video, please go back and rewatch. That was one side of the X, other side of the X, horizontal, figure it down, figure it out. So to that, let's add a couple more things to really get some fluidity in your striking motions. So the first one we're gonna have is the abanico with tick. So just from a standstill perspective, you can feed an angle one if you want to. You're gonna go around the head and you're just gonna think about bringing your elbow out and bringing your elbow in. So it's just like I'm doing the old like Nautilus butterfly equipment at the gym here, except my elbow is going to go across to my other shoulder. So my elbow is going to remain flat, like I'm leaning on top of a counter or a table. And that's the biggest thing because that's going to keep the tip of the stick straight on target here because see my elbow remains on that plane. When my elbow starts to move around, you're going to change the targeting line and nothing wrong with that. But in the beginning, you just want something to fan back and forth this way. You could do it to the side as well, and it can be done in front for different purposes, like this way. But the biggest one you want is overhead. Then you can start playing with like a, a four corner box. So I can hit the top right corner. I can hit the bottom left corner, top right corner, top left corner, bottom right corner. And you can just start to mix those up. But above all, the first thing that you want is accuracy with that elbow being level and in position here in this way. And you should do it both sides. So just watch yourself in the mirror, grab your camera phone, whatever you got, and just see if there's targeting. Another thing you can do is you can hold an object out in place and you can strike the end of it like that. If you have two sticks, that works great. Uh, you could use any kind of object in the wall. If, if it's nice outside, grab the leaf of a tree and just start to work your targeting on that. But that's the abanico with tick or fan strike. So a tick just means wrist snap or slash. So the next one I'll give you is called tres personas, which just means three people. Uh, there's a lot of Catholicism entrenched in the country of the Philippines and their history with the Spanish. So uh, the name I was given for this was tres personas or Kawaiian sometimes. So you're going to go center line, backhand, forehand. Center line, backhand, forehand. So the center line with tick is palm up and it's gonna bounce and come back. And then basically you're just doing a downward X. It's gonna look like center line, backhand, forehand. Like that, that's it. So already you could go center line, backhand, forehand, abanico with tick. One, one, two, three, abanico with tick. One, one, two, three, abanico with tick. If you have something heavy, the tick can actually roll through and become a backhand that way, kind of like a, like a backhand floretti. So I hit the backhand, but I travel through, backhand again that way. So it's vertical, backhand, forehand, abanico would tick this way, okay? And you just start to mix that up. Okay, the next thing you want is what I call the standard H which is your redondo. So redondo is a circular motion that drops forward and then uses the shoulder to open up. So a lot of people start to do it where they shorten it up or they use their wrist somehow or they, they go around and they stop the travel. The whole thing about redondo is to let it go forward and right back to the guard. So I wanna think about punching forward and letting the object fall and then letting my shoulder socket take over. So this is known as a forehand redondo because it stays on the forehand side and comes back to my shoulder. That's it. Okay, so backhand redondo, it just starts in the close guard position and does the same thing. Vertical line could be the crown of the head, could be the shoulder, could be the hand, could be the elbow, could be the kneecap, could be the foot, whatever you hit, you're just making a circular motion. And again, you're looking for extension here. Try not to shorten these up. Because in a live fire situation under stress, like even sparring, what's gonna happen is you're gonna, you're gonna shorten it up anyway as your cardio leaves you, whatever your stamina is. So you really wanna get forward extension. So the standard H, that's just what I call it, is you're just gonna go redondo, center line slash. Redondo, center line slash. Redondo, slash, that's it. So now you can just go back and forth on both sides. Then you could double it up. Two on the forehand, one slash. Two on the backhand, one slash. That's it. 
one, two, back in. From here, I could go two backhand, abanico with tick, two forehand, slash, trespasonis, that's it. Back to the abanico with tick, back to the slash, redondo, slash, could go into the upward figure eight that we talked about last time, back to horizontal keep away, one side of the X, back to redondo, slash, right to abanico, redondo on the other side. So already just these few components will really get this thing moving. And I just spoke earlier, I was thinking of the last combination we're gonna do, the Kawaiian. The other name for this is the San Miguel flow or San Rafael flow. San being Saint Raphael and Saint Michael, because again, the influence from the Spanish and Catholicism is in the naming. Now, people have gone more traditional indigenous names, so we either use Visayan or Tagalog, and that's where the term Kawaiian comes from. It doesn't actually come from Hawaii, even though it kind of sounds like that. So what you're gonna do on this one, there's two options. So one is to go forehand, backhand, and uppercut. Look what I'm doing. It's one side of the X, that's it. So downward X into one side of the X, and now the last motion is gonna be one redondo from the backhand side, but instead of going vertical, I'm gonna go around the head and do the angle one. To get back, just slash back to your guard position and you're here. So again, it's forehand, backhand down, uppercut, redondo, and then just reset. And if you do any kind of reset, it doesn't matter. Just whenever you're in an open position, you can go through that set. So forehand, backhand, uppercut, redondo. One, two, three, four, like that. One, two, three, four, okay? The second version is the angle one on the redondo side is the beginning. So if I'm in a closed guard position already, I just angle one, backhand, uppercut, angle one. So it's kind of repetitive because redondo, backhand, uppercut, redondo. Redondo, backhand, uppercut. Because if you think of the angle one here, that's one, two, three, four motions. So now on this closed side, I'm gonna basically do two redondos. So one, backhand, uppercut, one again. That would complete the set if I'm doing that four count. So I can always open up, four count open, that's it, close, that's it. So from here, now mix all that up. So redondo, horizontal, maybe double redondo, abanico, single redondo, trespersonis, redondo, redondo into Hawaiian, one side of the X, figure eight up, horizontal, figure eight down, into Hawaiian, into abanico, redondo, Pretty much the possibilities are limitless, and that's just using those combination sets. If you start to combine it even further with what we did previously, I could redondo, hit, abanico, redondo, angle six, seven, eight, nine, and start to really mix in the numbering system that we've gone through in the previous week. Okay, so one more time just to run through those all exclusively so you have them down. Abanico fan strike, single redondo, double redondo on the forehand side, horizontal slash, single redondo, double redondo on the backhand side. Trespassonis is with tick, backhand, forehand. Center line with tick, backhand, forehand. Kawaiian is forehand, backhand, uppercut, and this is your first diagonal redondo that goes from the two, the backhand side to the forehand side that way. And if you combine that with the 12 angles of attack, man, you're gonna never be encumbered. You're always gonna be moving from somewhere along with adding in the upward figure eight drills that I did the other day. So try it out in the air, try it out hitting something because a lot of times when you hit things, whether it's this chair or your heavy bag or whatever, there's a tendency to get stuck on the object. And if you have this mobility where, oh, now I can just go wherever I want to go, then it's a lot easier. Just like flowing and boxing, when you first start out throwing a three count combination, four, five count of punching, striking combination can be seen as like pretty difficult. But the more you just play with it and explore it, it's all going to come out anyway. So that was my quick tip today. So take it to heart. See if you can practice the numbering system, then spend another 10, 15 minutes, isolate these, and then put it all together and just see what kind of creativity comes out of that structure. All right, Warriors, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you, 
And again, your suggestions and comments are always welcome. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Guru Joe, Warriors out.